category one. Good, good. Now, to save time, I'm just going to start writing pH for the phenyl group. That's a good trick. It's really good that you're um, fitting this into the categories that we talked about before. This is not a carboxylic acid or acid derivative. This is an aldehyde. So it has to be one of those four categories of nucleophilic attack. And you remembered that cyanide falls into category one. Cyanide falls into category one. We basically just have to memorize that, which means it's just going to attack once. So that gives us this. Now, what, what about this HCN? This is what we could call um, cyanic acid. This is cyanic acid. So then is the, uh, is the uh, carbonyl oxygen going to protonate from that then? That is right. Good. Or actually, the book just called it hydrogen cyanide. Hydrogen cyanide. But it could also be called cyanic acid. It is an acid. Now, you might have thought then, if you recognize that this is an acid, you might have thought it would protonate first. Mm -hmm. However, this is not a strong acid. When people think about strong acids, they think about things like hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid. This is a relatively weak acid. So it's not going to be strong enough to do a lot of protonating of a neutral oxygen. Okay. But it's definitely strong enough to protonate a negative oxygen, as you just figured out. So um, we expect this to protonate now. And a good source of protonation here would be this HCN, absolutely. Okay. And there's no way that you get another attack because there's no other, um, well, now that we have, um, you were asking why the, why can't another cyanide attack here as if it was an alcohol? Uh, I think that's what you're thinking. That's a good question. Now, I don't know why that doesn't happen. After all, this step here produced another cyanide ion. However, this is actually just going to go on to attack a completely separate okay. um, aldehyde. Uh, I'm not really sure why it happens that way with cyanides. If the, in, with alcohols, you would have two alcohols attack the same carbon, whereas with cyanide, this new cyanide ion is just going to attack a separate aldehyde. I don't know what, what the reason is for that difference. So we'll just have to have memorized that alcohols do a category two attack, where two alcohols attack the same carbon, but cyanide does a category one attack, where only a single cyanide attack. So this is the final product here. We just have to have that memorized. Uh, usually, though, it is good to know this reaction is done under conditions where there's both hydrogen cyanide and a cyanide salt. Mm -hmm. And the way that works is that you, I think you add like mostly this and a small amount of the cyanide salt. But even though you only added a small amount of cyanide, we can see that every time this attack happens, it generates a new cyanide. So we only need a small amount of the cyanide salt to attack all of the aldehydes here. Okay. But each of them only gets attacked once. So um, the, the reagents, even though this is a cyanide attack, um, it's actually most of the cyanide ultimately is coming from the hydrogen cyanide. So it doesn't matter that the potassium cyanide is below the uh, hydrogen uh, uh, acid? Yeah, there's no significance to that. Okay. There's no significance to the, um, because these are just connected by a comma. If I had said one and then two, that would mean these are totally separate steps. But the fact that they're not numbered means that all of these reagents are just in the same flask. And then it's up to us to decide what order they're going to react in. Now, I want to emphasize, normally when we have an acid, we usually start with protonation. Sure. But that's because we usually start with strong acids, like sulfuric acid or hydrochloric acid. This is a weak acid, so it waits to protonate. Okay. First, we just use the cyanide nucleophile. So and, then, and then we have more going on here. Right. Now we're going to add the separate reagents. Oh, uh, what does happen here? Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So we should be able to predict what will happen here. I, I, I'm imagining that the um, the hydroxyl group is going to protonate. It's going to leave, and then uh, could we just predict that we're going to have a carboxylic acid? Why a carboxylic acid? Um, because we have the nitro group. Okay. Now, the second thing you said was on the right track. So here we have two different functional groups. What type of functional group is this? Hydroxyl or alcohol. Right. And what type of functional group is this? Uh, nitro. Right. 
And it turns out that when you have a nitrile and an alcohol connected to the same carbon, that's called a cyanohydrin. That's a name you might be expected to know. This is a cyanohydrin. Okay. When we have the nitrile carbon and the alcohol oxygen connected to the same carbon. Now we have to decide who's going to be the functional group that's really going to react here. And it turns out that we should focus on how the nitrile reacts, um, not on how the alcohol is going to react. So let's just ignore the alcohol. Let's just ignore the alcohol. If you just focus on this nitrile group here, what would you expect these reagents to do to the nitrile? They protonate it. Let's not worry about the mechanism. What would be the final product when the nitrile reacts with these reagents? That's right. We saw that we're not going to go through that mechanism, although you're, it, it would start with the protonation. And let's, the, the alcohol actually, it turns out, will not be affected in any way. So let's draw what the final product would be if the alcohol is not affected in any way. Number this compound. Okay, but just if we took out the cyanide group, right, and we right. added the whole carboxylic acid group, right? There would. Yeah, I think there's a mistake there. It'll be easier to think about that if we put in some numbers. Okay. Numbers into this picture. Now, there's really only two carbons here to number. We can call this the number one carbon, and this the number two carbon. I'm going to use the redraw and modify technique again, All right. which means I start by just redrawing the original picture. And now I'm going to modify it. Okay. Now, what type of, what's the name of the reaction that's going to happen now with these hydrolysis? Yeah, which means that we're, what type of functional group are, going to, are we going to create? Uh, the hydroxyl and the carbonyl. Uh, yeah, well, a carboxy group. We're going to create a carboxylic acid. Now, who is going to turn in to the carboxyl carbon? Is the number one carbon going to turn into the carboxyl carbon, or is the number two carbon going to turn into the carboxyl carbon? The number two. Actually, the number one, okay. because remember, this is nitrile hydrolysis. Okay. Nitrile hydrolysis. So who's actually being hydrolyzed? The nitrile group. Okay. It's actually the nitrile carbon that's going to turn in to um, the carboxylic acid. Okay. Maybe it might help to this like this. Here's the nitrile group. This is the carbon we're going to turn into the carboxy carbon. Well, I can do that by erasing the three bonds to nitrogen, All right. and instead turning this into a carboxy group. The reason you were having difficulty is you were trying to turn this into the carboxy carbon, but you were right, there's no, no way you can do that. Um, so when you do nitrile hydrolysis, it's the nitrile carbon itself that turns into the carboxy carbon, not the alpha carbon next door. The alpha carbon is totally unaffected. So this number two carbon was not affected, and this hydroxy was not affected. Uh, not the sidebar, but that was one thing that was confusing me about uh, uh, ketoenal detomerism. Yeah. Because when do I know that that's what the teacher wants me to show? Yeah. Ah, uh, that's it's tricky. It's just like when a ketone and you have a strong acid right. and then you assume that, that what, that's what he wants you to see if there's no other reagents. Yeah, that's tricky. Um, now, of course, your test is multiple choice, sure. so you can kind of see it in the choices if, you, okay. if he's drawn the enol. That makes things a little bit easier for you. All right. But um, in general, um, you have to remember that in any situation, anytime we see a ketone or aldehyde, mm -hmm. we should know that that will be in equilibrium with a small amount of the enol. Okay. Um, Basically, I think what you said was right. If he starts with a ketone or an aldehyde and he just adds acid mm -hmm. or he just adds base with no other reagents, well, then the only thing you could possibly show is the enol. Okay. On the other hand, if he puts acid and base in and other reagents as well, well, then he doesn't want you to just show the enol. He wants you to show the reaction of those other reagents. And so that's, that's basically what it's like four categories. Yeah, okay. Okay. that's right. So if he's added acid and base plus some other nucleophile, he wants you to do one of those four categories. Sorry about the sound. No, that's a good question. But if he just has the acid or base, then the only thing you can do is show the enol tautomerization. Okay, so uh, here we ended up with this. 
your previous uh, uh, thoughts were, were uh, uh, reasonable. You thought that maybe the alcohol would protonate and then leave. Mm -hmm. That seems like it might happen because uh, this is a secondary carbon, so you could form a carbocation here. Maybe there would be some extent of that. Um, however, notice what would happen. If this water left, you would expect it to be replaced by another nucleophile. But the only other nucleophile in the mix is more water. So even if this does sometimes leave, it's just going to be replaced by another OH group. That's why it, the, um, the chemist here was smart to add water and not alcohol as the solvent. If they had put in alcohol as the solvent, then you would get a whole mix of products when this gets replaced with an OR. So it was smart to use water as the solvent. So even if this does sometimes protonate and leave, ultimately you'll get the same thing when it gets replaced by another water. 